So, as you guys know, I've had problems with my Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro ISO. I did not have a problem with the Mini, the little cheapy one that's um, uh, like a cam link, but it does four cameras for the, about the same price as a cam link, actually. That one's fine, but I decided to upgrade and I've had nothing but problems. I had slippage for a month, a couple of months, tried all the different cables, all the different things. I've tried multiple machines and now I'm having um, an issue with the crackle. So if you hear a little kind of fritz, a little crackle, like a thermal crackle, then please let me know. However, there was a firmware update uh, the 1st of November. So what's it today? The 16th of November. And I've only been able to do to use the ISO once in that time. So this is my update. Um, while I'm waiting for you guys to come on. By the way, I'm not expecting people to come on. I've not told anybody. This is literally something I do on Mondays when I'm checking technology plus catching up on social media news. And I thought it would be fun for us to catch up on social media news. Oh, and I just want to answer a question I was sent privately. Um, I wear a mixture of drugstore drug store makeup and high end. So I've got um, e.l.f. on my eyes, E-L-F, I think it's eyes, lip, face. And then I have as a topper, Pat McGrath's really expensive palette. So, you know, for those of you that absolutely need to know from your favorite non-beauty guru, i.e. me, then Oh, uh, the, just before we go into the news, I'm setting things up on this monitor and I've switched my mic around so that I'm over the mic now because apparently I was coming in and out. This is all about a learning process, which is why I'm trying to get the tech right so that I know that it's always just user error. And um, it looks like we're live on LinkedIn. I'm checking because I got notification that... LinkedIn always bumps you. I think it's every month you have to reconnect the API, oh, what's it called, universal login thing. Uh, it's got a technical name, I can't remember it. Obviously, this is going to go really well today. I went to the dentist last week and my this side of my face is still swollen. But he said it would be until Monday, so it's Monday. So I'm expecting by 5 o'clock tonight that it will all have fixed itself. Anyway, you don't need to know that. Too much information for Monday. Unless you went to the dentist late last week and you want to tell me your little gory stories. That would be awesome. Okay, so again, this is a play vloggy, vlogcast, podcast for me to take to check the tech, <laughs> I can't speak, and also we're going to explore social media news as a way of me checking the tech. When I do um, private Zooms like social media mentoring or uh, last week I spoke at a global conference, there's a lot of prep beforehand, lots of notes, I've got my notepad available to me with my talking points. I have preset information set up. This is not that. This is you and me chatting, having a look at the goss. Let's see if this works. And oh look, I'm in the water over here. Whee. Um, if you want to know what that picture is, I'll show you. It's, uh, it's just mucking around, you know? Just mucking around. Right. So let's see what the news is. How's the sound? Have you heard that little thermal fritz I was talking about? I sent Black Magic, actually, it's New Magic um, videos 
they never got back to me. And then when I complained on Twitter, they said I had to call them. And that was like a week and a half later. So I will call them. If this continues, I'm not wasting my time. If it doesn't, I just don't have time to chase all this stuff. Do you ever feel that way? And I know people contact me and they say, how do I do X, Y, Z? And I'm like, well, you can book that in for the next session or you can Google the answer yourself. And they're like, I don't have time to do that. And I just want to say, I hear you. I mean, I don't have the time to do it for you for free, but I hear you. I feel exactly the same way. I would pay black magic to fix this for me, but there you go. So what do we have here? Enough of a rant. Let me up that a little bit. I don't know if you can see it. If you're on a phone, let me know how this is working for you. And what I might do is just move some of this stuff up a little bit. I don't want to be in the way, but I can always hide myself. So researchers investigate why popular artificial intelligence algorithms classify objects by texture, not by shape. That's fascinating because I know that deep text, deep face, deep thought, deep mind, all, actually I did think deep thought was from a movie and it was a bad algorithm, but deep text, deep face, Facebook, deep mind, Google, um, they're using the AI algorithms to review videos like this one, live videos, recorded videos, and checking images in the background, checking text in the background, looking at the pictures that are being shown, and then making decisions about the contextual relevance of the content to the heading in the description and to the audience. So if you're a social media manager, if you're um, a marketing manager, then hopefully everything that I'm showing in the video reinforces the fact that I teach and consult and mentor and all that good stuff on social media. So I don't know what the algorithm would th think of the textures. Like, do they look at me and say, oh, she's got nice skin? <laughs> I doubt it. That's quite a nice color. Oh, it's Phoebe. There's a bias exhibited in certain kinds of computer vision algorithms called convolutional, convolutional neural networks. Unlike humans, CNNs tend to classify images by texture rather than shape. It's the difference in the data that they see. I wonder if they're a little bit color blind or shape blind, but textures must have a specific way of converting. Checkered and human said circle. Hmm. There you go. How would you translate that into optimizing for algorithms? And that's the question that I always ask myself when I read this stuff. I go, oh, that's interesting, kind of. And then I want to know, what do I need to do in my content to, to optimize? And I think, you know, maybe a classic one, because texture is important to humans as well, is maybe if you're a luxe brand, really go heavy on the velvet backgrounds. I don't know. You'd have to explore that. Um, social media firms must face sanction for anti-vax content. Oh, we got away from coronavirus for five minutes. Oh, yeah, this is interesting. We have to remember that we're asking an American company to, to censor citizens of various countries. And we already saw that uh, Trump's, oh yeah, I saw this yesterday on a video. Trump's ad campaigns were being blocked. And I don't remember if it was Twitter or if it was on 
Excuse me. Uh, Donald Trump. I don't remember if it's on Twitter or Facebook. Let's have a look at Facebooks. Um, Sawari on Periscope or Twitter. You asked, is it a free app? I think you're talking about um, this one called Feedly. And yes, there is a free version at feedly.com. You can have a certain number of folders. I think it's five folders over here and maybe a 100 RSS feeds or APIs or sources of some kind. And then you have to pay $4 a month. But the, there is a free version. However, I may be changing at the end of the month to Inno Reader. Um, I'm just going to wait for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, because I'm tired of paying and then realizing that I, um, if I hadn't waited another two weeks, I would have got a 50% discount or something ridiculous. See how these services train us? <laughs> All right, so I want inactive ads for Donald J. Trump. And then I want to find out if they're disallowed or didn't have a disclaimer, some of them. So that was November the 1st and November the 1st. Why was that one blocked? Or didn't use it. No, it tells you if it's disallowed. And it tells you why. I've seen it for the Liberal Party in Australia. But I can't remember where it is now. They're the disclaimers. They're the inactives. All regions. United States. By date. By reach, platform, sort by, no, okay. So either, look, he's got a pretty cluey advertising team, of course, and so I doubt that they would skirt that issue. So these are all RSVP now. This is just about coming to his... Um, events so it's not this one might be interesting don't let Joe Biden pack the court 199 ads use this creative so that's um, an ad set under ads which is under campaigns shown in Michigan and Pennsylvania primarily and uh probably says on here why they blocked it or why they stopped it but how long did it run for reached 700,000 people so it ran for a while predominantly men a lot of the other ads are in the higher age group hmm. and then here's this group of ads Right. I think it must have been Twitter that disallowed it. I don't want to dig into that anymore, but let's keep going. Um, yeah, we're going to be in that situation where every country will try to bring in their own regulations for Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and so on. And I'm in two minds about this because media has regulations which are really poorly and ineffectively implemented in Australia. If you look at the um, regulatory bodies, they don't enforce anything. They, they tend to take the side of the media lobby groups. And uh, some of the media things that we as everyday small businesses have to for instance, abide by under advertising standards and promotion standards and, I don't know, everything. <laughs> uh, they, the media get a pass on. Truthiness for morning TV shows is just not there. So they're able to incite whatever they want. 
and and I've had a few arguments and fights on Twitter and on my blog about that with the regulatory people and phone calls from them, uh, which did not end well. And and I just want to say, I just want a level playing field. Regulate everybody so you go to that sort of left side of the spectrum or don't regulate anybody and go to the libertarian side of the spectrum but don't regulate small business and individuals and take them to court and have a look sometime at the court cases and you'll see what I mean and then do token fines for the big companies the sort of thing that they spend on their Christmas party twenty thousand fifty thousand dollars for globals and then don't regulate try and regulate the platforms but then ignore media companies that's my issue so when you regulate platforms you're asking them to censor Australian citizens so basically we're asking an American Californian company to censor I don't know Joe in Wagga Wagga and if you're Joe in Wagga Wagga, hi. So let's go back to the news. That's my little rant for Monday morning. See, this is what you do on a Monday morning at 10.30. You G yourself up and you get all excited again. Why were they going back to bed? Which is so easy to do when you work from home. Let me have a look at the LinkedIn blog. LinkedIn, what have you been up to? A transparency report. This should be exciting. Have you noticed that the um, LinkedIn does social media dumping on other platforms? Not on their own platform, but on other platforms. Social media dumping is when you take 20 videos and dump them all at once instead of having a content calendar. And what it means is you're just using it as a storage area or for SEO. So, for instance, LinkedIn will dump 8 or 10 videos on YouTube. And then I have to make a decision of which one I'm going to watch because I'm not going to watch them all. And after a couple of hours, it's vanished out of my stream because other people have uploaded. So, And then there's nothing for a month. I don't understand why they do that. Why not put up two videos a day for eight weeks or something? Uh, we were able to stop a large-scale effort that tried to create more than 33 million fake accounts. And then the government's like, you have to regulate and you have to do this. And then they're like, we're trying. <laughs> mm. Our automated defenses, our bots, block 98.4% of all fake accounts that we know about. Increased member reporting for spam and scams in this report helped us. Good Goodo. And if I see one more of those, double tap for more information, which is a practical joke. That's what they're trying to pay it off, play it off as. But it's actually an algorithm game because when you double tap on LinkedIn, it likes the post and then you see more and it, gets, it goes more viral. And so there's lots of double click to see more. And then when you double click, you don't see anything more, but you've liked the post, so therefore you've scammed people as somebody who tries to work with the algorithm reasonably legitimately um, I don't like them but you know and then of course 50 million people comment you can't do that and then the comments actually increase the amount of reach as well so it's all kind of super annoying right um Just checking my studio. Do, do. We're in the studio. I don't think I sound like Donna Summer. We saw an increase in the amount of hate speech harassment adult. Oh, that's all the dating stuff. You know, I mean by dating stuff. And violent content that we removed 
for the January June pe reporting period, we removed 22,000 instances of misinformation, including misinformation related to global pandemic. Which is, I, I wonder how many Facebook removed. Transparency, I think it's in their media center. But we can have a look. I need to put this one in my. Um, in 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 my feedly, I need to put it in here. But I have to faff around. This is the problem with for me with feedly is I have to use feedly and fetch RSS, and Inno Reader only uses the two together. So you go to fetch RSS, put this link in, create the feed, then go back to feedly and add it. With Inno Reader, you just plug this in and it works on the paid version. So a bit excited to try that. Can you hear my computer in the background? I've swapped out my mics. Oh, it sounds like an aeroplane about to take off. Hard questions blog. Community standards, safety center. Let's have a look at the blog. And then... I'm looking for the report. It's interesting to me that people say to me, oh, um, Facebook don't do anything. They haven't updated it since 2019. Must be somewhere else. Oh, it's on, it's on the about facebook.com site. And this, this is the other things, they move you around. So there's about.fb.com, there's Facebook about media or something let's go to the newsroom and the media one they use f to notify the media so it's more like their social media press room Is it facebook i think it's facebook.com for media now then they change their urls around a lot so if you go to Facebook for media, you'll see the stuff that they're showing for the media. Um, like traditional media. They haven't updated their newsroom since November the 5th. What's the day today? The 16th. Oh no, here we go. Rules and shop tabs. Oh, that's an Instagram-y thing. Okay. Yeah, I might, I'm going to make a note. I need to go and have a look at that. Sorry, did my sound go funny then? Um, I want to know, LinkedIn was, what, 22K? I'm writing with a real-world pen. Um, that was the CNN thing. Oh, it's LinkedIn. 22,800, so 23,000 posts in six months were removed. I just want to graph that against the, the Twitters. And Twitter made an announcement yesterday that once politicians are no longer in office, that if they spread misinformation, they will have their accounts temporarily blocked or permanently blocked. Again, American companies are interfering in global political processes because what's allowed in one country is not allowed in another. For instance, in Australia, our politicians have an exemption to truthiness. They do not have to make factually accurate statements. It's part of the fun of being a politician. And um, it means that Facebook and Twitter will need to have different algorithms and rules. I'm sure they can do it for each country. And I mean, if you think Australia is different than America, think about Saudi Arabia and China and Yemen and various other countries. What are they going to do then? And do, again, do we want 
a board of directors and shareholders of a company doing cancel culture around politics. But still, they have to do something, so how that all works, we'll see. I'd really like to see a peer-to-peer -peer network formed, sort of something like how Wikipedia was supposed to be but didn't end up being. Alright, uh, what else do we have here? What's Twitter up to? So I'm going to check out the, how many posts Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of them have taken down around false information on the pandemic or questionable. Twitter Blue Room. Oh, it's entertainment. So they're just putting up entertainment news. I wish they would separate out. Let me go to blog.twitter.com. And maybe it's possible. Um, I, I don't want sports updates and I don't want fun interviews with Blackpink. I want to know how the platform is changing. So, okay, so there's a generic one, a business one, a developer techie geeky one, engineering, AI, algorithm one. I think the developer one is for developers to make the plugins and the apps and, and third-party partnerships like um, Hootsuites of the world. And then engineering would be for the uh, talking about research and AI and then investor relations. Maybe I should just subscribe to investor relations because that, that'll talk about the big updates. And see, there's nothing here about there's nothing here about black pink. And it's up to date, twelfth of November. Okay. <laughs> Wonder where I got the other one from. Y YouTube? Oh, did I in their YouTube account into that one. Doesn't look like it. Oh yeah, okay. That's right. So all they're doing with this one is they're resharing their YouTube videos. That's interesting, isn't it? Given that they own Periscope, which is a, their video brand. Inclusion and Diversity Report in May. Principles during a pandemic. So, Nicole, thank you. I appreciate the feedback from LinkedIn. Shout out to my LinkedIn homies. I don't think I'm supposed to say that on LinkedIn or anywhere else, but whatever. Principles during a pandemic. Oh, do I have to read this now? I mean, I know I said I'd catch up on all the news, but put people first and really listen. No. <laughs> no. Because when I contacted Twitter and asked them what they were doing about bullying and trolling on Twitter and I was being seriously trolled with death threats, they dropped me from their PR list. So... I. Punishment. I, I don't go to their stuff anywhere. I've never been. But uh, I wouldn't say that unless they're changing it. Has always been our tweets. No, it's not. Lead with empathy and flexibility. Oh, nice. Twitter parents. We launched a special listening session for parents. What we heard was that our recently introduced supplemental childcare benefit wasn't having that impact that we hoped because of the shelter-in-place orders. Oh, good. So this is the social good initiatives to support families. Twitter's interesting. A lot of people have their own view on who uses Twitter, and they'll say to me things like, oh, only the kids use Twitter, or only old people use Twitter, or only... <laughs> and Families use Twitter quite a lot. Cultivate allyship. Allyship. 
Twitter agents to host flock talks for the entire company. I guess flock talks are internal Zooms, are they? It's kind of a cool name. Why can't I come up with a cool name? I can't come up with a cool name for this. So, so far it's been named Social Media Monday. I did have Wine O'Clock where Friday afternoons we would have a glass of wine and by we I mean me and by a glass of wine I mean probably two but given that I'm not much of a drinker I've stopped that two weeks ago in fact I haven't had a drink in the two weeks because I just I'd done three or four of them and, and that was enough I don't mind having a drink on New Year's Eve or birthday and a little glass of champagne or something but that's about it By the hashtag Twitter team up, we brought a cross-functional group of leaders from BRGs. Oh, I'm such a failure. Um, what's it acronym? I, maybe I have to put tech in? I don't know. Tech? Bold rate generators. All right, that's your homework. Go <laughs> find out what the BRG... Tweet them and say, what does BRGs mean? You know, I'm going to close out of here and then immediately, oh, of course, it's the Department of Blah Blah. Product policy and trust and safety. Anti-Asian rhetoric. You need to demote... Any use of Wuhan virus or China virus, any of those hashtags, demote those in their top tweets algorithm. I'm all for free speech, but yeah, that, that that's unnecessary. Use the formal term or don't do it at all. Hmm. BRG leadership. Why aren't they telling me what BRG stands for? A long time ago, very long time ago, I studied some journalism and I worked on the University of Adelaide then in-house newspaper and it was called ONDIT, O-N space D-I-T. I think it means news of the day. Who knows? It was years ago, decades ago. And we were always told, and you don't necessarily want to follow all the rules in your content creation. Um, you're not going to have an editor that edits from the bottom up, for instance, so you can put a strong message at the bottom. Sometimes people scroll to the bottom for that message. But there are other things, and one of them is if you're using an acronym, introduce the acronym and then put brackets around it. I think there was a couple of exceptions where the acronym is the most, is, is better known. Can't think of one at the moment. But, you know, if you're going to do D-O-H, then you have to put Department of Health and then put D-O-H next to it. And they didn't do that here. B-R-G. Maybe they have got B-R-G in here. Go back to here. If you know what BRG means, please let me know. Maybe I should tweet that out. No, I'll do it later. If you're just joining us and I seem to be a bit lost, that's because I am. The idea behind these Monday social media sessions is that we explore social media news together from the primary companies such as Twitter and LinkedIn and Google and Facebook and then I also see if I can find some stuff about Australia and I do this so I can check my tech for my social media um, mentoring sessions for conferences, online conferences I'm speaking at and 
uh, when I'm doing my recordings for my online courses and whatever else I might be doing, my YouTube channel, my formal stuff. So I'm, I have to catch up on social media news for the week anyway. And um, Twitter women. You heard my comment earlier. I don't want to go on about it. Twitter faith. Oh, the Ramadan workshop. That was a little while ago. Flock. Interesting. Interesting term. If you are interested in online community management, on social psychology, on, on uh, how groups work, how tribes work, online, offline, we don't actually change a lot in our behaviours. If you, So social psychology, anthropology, sociology, those kind of things. How flocks, cults, and any tribe that is, um, I was going to say less than transparent, but they can be transparent, ha have fairly uh, rigid social paradigms or very rigid structures. They're, for me, more interesting to watch because the rites of passage and the rituals are strong with these ones. The force is strong with, with those. So the term flock is to engender a brand ambassador community that has strong rules about what's allowed and what's not allowed. And you'll know what I'm talking about. It's like if you try to go into an Android support community and ask about the iPhone, you'll be kicked out. And if you go into a vegetarian or vegan community and uh, try to talk about introducing some meat protein or even fish, uh, they have their own <laughs> boundaries. I don't know the word boundaries, I think is what I'm looking for. As a marketer doing distributed marketing, which means entering into those communities, learning their, learning their rules, learning what's allowed, what's not allowed, learning who their influences are and the voices of those influences, learning who's judgmental and who's not, um, I think is sort of key to distributed marketing. Obviously, if you're running your direct channel, your own channel, not distributed, then you set the rules. You're not allowed to swear at me or you're not allowed to talk about this topic or or no customer service questions in this Facebook group, or only customer service questions, or whatever it is you want to set up. You can set up what's called the house rules. Um, but if you're doing distributed marketing, outbound marketing, into influencers and groups and other people's hashtags and things like that, then learning those rules is super important. And I find it interesting that they're using the term flock for that, I guess. So we're looking at, um, um, we've been on about 40 minutes and that should be long enough to test all my tech let me just go back to here and see what else we're missing so Facebook Australia what are you up to? Shopping on Instagram. There's been a lot of problems with shopping on Instagram, uh, shops for Instagram for Australia. It's We've been a bit lagging and then people have been contacting me. Well, where is it? What can I do? Ah. Oh, it's a live. I don't want to watch a live. Irony. I know. Here's the interesting thing. Instagram is for what's called visual story types. So people who like Instagram are predominantly visual 
and they will skip the words and go directly try to understand the image. Text story types skip the image and look around for the words. This is well known. Facebook builds it into their algorithm. They use the term story type in the algorithm. Um, we've used other. It's a teaching thing too. You have to shift between visual and auditory and whatever. Um, off track. Okay, so Instagram is for visual. Interestingly, some audiences that I work with, including the people who may be setting up the shops on Instagram, so for instance, the, the developer brain, the engineering psychographic, are not visual. They are text. So they'd rather have some dot points and then get to work on something. When they have to watch a video on how to implement something, they go bonkers. Colourful infographics is too much like primary school. So you have to map your information distribution to, to the story type, but they may not be the end user. So the end user on Instagram likes colourful magazines, but the people who implement the Facebook app stuff don't. So by forcing me into a video to try and understand this stuff is um, – but maybe they're targeting marketing people. I think about 90, 80 or 90% of those are visual. NADOC, another NADOC. Yeah. Facebook had a lot of pages and then including a Facebook for Australian politics – Facebook for Australian media, Facebook like Australian, geo-fenced, and then the verticals. Um, and I can't find them anymore, so I think they've got rid of them. I will make a note of that. Maybe we'll do a video on that one. And we'll talk about how the algorithm favours the psychographics and that even the platforms use it that way. What else are we looking at here? Media Center. Oh, that's just the press room for the Prime Minister. I don't know what it's doing in here. Have you got any news for me? Those of you that stuck around? Oh, our peak time was about 10 minutes ago. Uh, and that often happens about... 11, 12 minute mark, sometimes up to 20. Facebook developers. Again, if you're just joining me, I am catching up on the news. I am, this is something I have to do anyway, so I might as well check all my tech and inflict it on you guys. If you've got any questions, please let me know. So this is developers, customer care and why it matters. When it comes to running a business, customer care is important. A good customer support starts with good communication. Have you tried to communicate with Facebook? It helps cultivate loyal customers, generates new business and enhances your brand reputation. No. Facebook's figured out that most people, like we do for most businesses, is does this suit us? Does this fix our problem? And we start from there. Facebook Accelerator Commerce Program. Now, I want to dig into that one. What I'm looking for, um, a long time ago, Zuckerberg said, Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Facebook, said, we're a media company. And then he shifted it and said he wasn't. And I he's deleted all reference to saying it. And also he said that he wasn't in the commerce, e-commerce world. He wasn't interested. But given that the PayPal mafia are heavy investors in Facebook, the eBay, they built eBay as well, it seemed unlikely to me that they wouldn't focus on commerce and now they're bringing out their own Bitcoin. What's it called? It starts with K? Karma? Whatever. And... Um, Marketplace is getting a revamp. Shops are getting massive revamps across Instagram and Facebook. 
you always have been, not always, but mostly have been able to add a Shopify shop to your Facebook page so people can view and then purchase. But now the actual development of an inbuilt Facebook payment system, I think they're going to eat eBay's lunch. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? But I need to look into this Facebook Accelerator Commerce program and find out more about it. I mean, I could ask them for the information, or, but it's all in the media center anyway. About the only thing that the je my journalist hat on or my influencer hat on, about the only thing that you actually get is five minutes early warning or sometimes things are embargoed and I just don't need to be that topical. I'm not chasing the latest piece of news. If I was, I would be doing three lives a day, which I've thought about. But then again, what about the rest of the things that I do in the world? Just have a quick flick through and then I'll switch you across so you can have a look as well. Okay. Courageous or cutthroat, Adani changes name to Bravas. Why is this in a social media campaign? So if you are unaware, Adani is a very contentious mine in Australia. It's in the Finn Review. I'm not paying for a press release from the AFR and they don't have enough insight for me to to want to pay for that. I'd rather read the original press release. Actually, let's see if it's on there. Adani Bravas press release. <gasps> it's a PDF. <laughs> So much for a social media press room. <laughs> I <laughs> This is funny because mining in Australia do massive social media. Massive, massive, massive social media. They're the most active industry on Twitter from the CEO down. More than traditional media, more than banks, more than anyone else. So... Um, See, embargoed till the 5th of November. Embargoes, really? Bravis is an Australian company. We operate under Australian law and we'll pay taxes and royalties here. Or oh, get the benefits. I don't know. You know what you should have a look at? Let's have a look for press room. If you were wondering what I was talking about, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn. And then if we go to Media Center, usually that's another name for, there's their press releases. And this is one where I would have to take it, put it into Fetch RSS, burn an RSS feed, and then put that into Feedly so that I could monitor. What do I do with it? What do I do with it? Adani, Adani, Adani. There it is. <laughs> so that I could monitor news coming out. I don't know why they don't make this easier for journalists. I don't know. Maybe they send out PDFs to journalists. <laughs> journalists who are running around with an iPhone trying to read a PDF. <laughs> Good luck with that one. There's the videos. And they're not hosted on YouTube. They must be, right? And they're not embedding them in YouTube, so they're not getting the SEO for that. So then a question is, maybe they're trying to gate their content so that it's not distributed. One week ago, Adani Mining is now Bravas Mining. Oh no, now YouTube thinks I'm interested in mining. 
my life, my life. You should have seen my streams, my news feeds when I was working on um, sexual health for Department of Health. I couldn't take a screenshot of anything. Okay, so they've got 128 subscribers. And the video is not so the video is not being embedded in the press release because the press release is a PDF. See what I mean by it's not a social media press release? It, yeah, I've been teaching social media press releases since um let me see, I started in two thousand and five at the University of Sydney. I reckon the social media press release thing was two thousand and eight. So twelve years. I don't get it. If you want to gate information and you don't want the trolls coming in, then why put it on social at all? Why invest such a lot of time and energy on social, but then not create social media press releases for the press to easily, much more easily distribute your social media assets? They're not even linking to their YouTube. I don't know. I don't have time to go into that one. But these are the questions that I ask myself, which reminds me, I need to run a a one-month plan with me course on social media press releases. And when I say, which reminds me, I mean I thought of this in July and never did anything about it. So social media press release. If you're on my email newsletter list, you'll get the notification when it's coming out. Otherwise, email pa at com. Is it on here? Uh, no, it's not. But you can go to laurelpatwith.com and all my contact information's on there. Let me know if you're interested in a social media press release. Um, it's a live, this kind of thing. But you can ask questions and you can come in and show me what you're doing. We'll do it for a month. And at the end of the month, you have to have created a social media press release and show it to me. <laughs> We're going to do a show and tell That'll be fun. I like to do that. Yes, let's do that one. I have got one coming up before then, which is on social media audits, how to do a social media audit. I think that course is full or nearly full. But if you're more interested in social media audits, email pa at laurelpapworth.com. That's for my personal assistant, Fiona. And we'll sort out a second session because the audit one I think is full. Um, if you want to do social media press releases, email as well. I will sort out on these live streams that I can press a button so that you can have a coupon code or you can go directly to a link to sign up or you can get all the information directly online. But at the moment, everything's in a bit of flux because... Mind you, it's taken me six months. <laughs> I have real life classes and then I have, which are no longer happening. And then I have online Zoom mentoring with companies and individuals. And then I have my conference and webinars. And then I have my external, um, other external of uh, classroom face training such as university courses and things like that which are moving online but I'm nearly there and what I want to do is take things like the campaign course and the Facebook and Instagram course and the algorithm course and the advertising course and all the ones I run in the classroom but I also have online recorded online versions I need to find a way to make them project based for a month so that we can start the month with a lecture go through some exercises, do some tutorials where we have backwards and forwards, you and me, and then have the homework, <laughs> which gets presented back to me at the end of the month, and then you get a little certificate. Because that fits better in than the passive work whenever you want kind of online courses, and it probably will suit people who don't want to sit in a classroom just yet. We're 
going to settle things down first and then we're going back to the classroom. So there we go. All right, um, let me put that up again. LaurelPapworth.com, if you didn't grab it, PA at LaurelPapworth.com. What should my next session be on? I don't know. I don't know. Probably won't do one till next Monday, 10.30 a.m. ish. Ish. What do you think I am? Channel 10, the ABC? <laughs> uh, programming guides? Who cares? It's the internet. But around 10.30 on Monday, I'll do another social media news live stream. You are very welcome to join me. And uh, thank you to Sawari and Nicole for commenting and asking questions. All right, guys, I will have to love you and leave you if I can remember how to stop this thing. There we go. Bye.